Welcome to another SATS revision video. In this video, we're going to have a look at the CGP Set B Grammar and Punctuation 2 test. What I recommend you do is if you've got this book, work your way through the questions as best you can, give yourself 10 minutes maximum to do it, and then come back to watch this video and see if you got the marks. If you haven't got this book yet, there is a link in the description. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon, it's very, very cheap, and it's really useful at helping to improve your SPAG knowledge. Okay, let's go through the questions. Number one, underline the subject in each sentence below. So basically, who is the main character in each sentence? So the first one will be Lydia. Lydia found a beautiful necklace. She's the main character. This is what she's done. Last week, I played football in the park. Who's this about? It's about this person, I. At nine o'clock, the postman delivered the letters. The postman is the subject in this sentence. Number two, read the sentence below, circle the coordinating conjunction and underline the subordinating conjunction. You should really know coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. The best way to remember is to just write a list of them. If you Google them, you can find all the, the most common of both. Try and memorize them as best you can, and then you can, it's easier to spot. So if we have a look at the sentence we've got here, Patrick is good at cricket and tennis, although he doesn't play very often. Okay, so it says circle the coordinating conjunction. And I know that and is a coordinating conjunction. Brings two of these statements together. And I know that although is the subordinating conjunction. It's really useful if you can go online and find the, the list of coordinating and subordinating conjunctions and try your best to memorize them because this is a question that always comes up in SPAG tests. Number three, there are three dessert choices on a menu. Chocolate pudding, fruit tart, and ice cream. Write the choices as a list of bullet points on the lines below. Remember to punctuate your answer correctly. So, in this, we are going to need to remember two very important things. When we're writing bullet points, you do not need full stops. So make sure you don't include those. Another thing you do need is capital letters. So you need to make sure you've put the capital letters so that's how you would record your answer. Number four, do you ever regret buying that large pink handbag, Joanne? In each row, put a tick to show whether each underlined word is an adjective or an adverb. Well, thinking about an adjective, an adjective is a description word. It gives us extra information about a noun. You can see the noun here, handbag. These are the two words that are describing the handbag. So these are the two adjectives. So we've got large and pink. Now, ever is giving us a time. That's not really describing a noun, so it's definitely not an adjective, but it is an adverb. So that's the correct answer for that question. Number five, read the sentence below and circle the word or words that make it a question. Now, if you look at the sentence, they don't know who I am, do they? This first bit here, they don't know who I am, that's just a statement. That's definitely not a question. The only reason we know it's a question is they add this bit on the end. Do they? They've asked a specific question relating to this bit. So this bit here, do they, that is the words that tell us it's a question. Number six, each of the sentences below is missing a prefix. Draw a line to match each sentence to the most likely prefix. One has been done for you. So a prefix is a section of a word that goes at the beginning, hence the word pre. Basically, you need to know what these words mean. It's a bit of a, a matching exercise, really. So let's have a look at this one. The doctor gave me something biotics. You should know that that is anti, antibiotics. She's writing her biography. She's writing it herself. It is an autobiography. The delay put them at a disadvantage. And that's the correct answer for that question. Number seven, tick the two sentences below that correctly use the present perfect tense. Okay, with the present perfect, we're looking for some clues. Look at this section here. Amy bought some bread. Well, that straight away, we know it can't be right because it's not in the present at all. It's in the past. I have told him the truth, could be in the past, or it could potentially be in the present as well, if we think about it. Moving on to this one, Kimberly has braked a window. Well, we definitely know that's not correct, because braked isn't a word. And a flea has bitten my dog. So having a look at the options that we've got, I have told him the truth would be the first one. 
that's in the present perfect. A flea has bitten my dog. That would be the answer to the second one. So we know it's the present perfect tense because it hasn't given us a definite time. I have told him the truth. Now, if you'd have said I have told him the truth yesterday, then that isn't present perfect tense. It's in the past tense. If it had said a flea has bitten my dog or had bitten my dog on Tuesday, we know that that's not present perfect. So we need a has or a have and we know that we don't need a time. It's an indefinite amount of time. Number eight, read the sentences below. Tick the sentence which is most likely to end with an exclamation mark. So looking at the first one, I can't believe we've won the competition. The gardener was 45 years old. Can we go to the park, please, mum? Feed the dog before you go to bed. So looking at these ones, we can rule a few out straight away. The gardener was 45 years old. That's just a statement. That's not very interesting. We wouldn't be exclaiming that. Can we go to the park, please, mum? That's a question. So that's definitely not an exclamation mark. Feed the dog before you go to bed. That's a command. That doesn't necessarily need an exclamation mark. It's just a full stop in this case. But the one I think is the most relevant is this top one here. I can't believe it. We've won the competition. That's something amazing that you would shout. You would exclaim that. That's fantastic. So that's the answer to number eight. Number nine, the sentence below is missing a comma. Tick one box to show where the comma should go. Ralph has just bought a big red and shiny car. The obvious thing that's standing out to me is this noun phrase here, a big red and shiny car. Now, because it's a list and there's a lot of adjectives there describing the car, you should know that if you've not got an and, we need to make sure we've got a comma, it's a list. So this is where the comma should go. Number 10, read the sentence below. Which word class does the word race belong to? So pupils should not race down the school corridors. Now race could be a number of these options if it was just by itself. Race can be a noun, race can be a verb, for example. But we need to look at the sentence. Now if you were to replace race with another verb, for example, let's say run, pupils should not run down the school corridors. That makes perfect sense. If you were to replace it with another noun, something similar like a marathon, Pupils should not marathon down the school corridors doesn't make any sense at all. In this case, it is a verb. They're doing something. It's an action word. Don't race down the school corridors. Okay, the last two questions. The sentence below is missing a hyphen. Tick one box to show where the hyphen should go. We booked an incredible last-minute holiday to Lanzarote. So the hyphen is going in there to join two words together that describe a noun. So if we look at this, we booked an incredible, if we were to put it there, an incredible doesn't really need joining together, they're two separate words. Neither does incredible last. But if we look at last minute, well, that is a word in itself effectively, a last minute holiday. So that hyphen is there to use this as one big adjective describing this noun holiday. So the correct answer is here. The last question, question 12. Tick the sentence below that uses a colon correctly. The best thing you can do is pause when you get to the colon and see if it makes sense. So if we pick the last one, we are going to the shop, we have no bread or milk. Doesn't make any sense at all, doesn't sound right, does it? We are going to the shop, we have no bread or milk. Still doesn't make sense. The obvious one is the top one. We are going to the shop, we have no bread or milk. That makes much more sense. And it's two separate sentences basically joined together, two statements. As long as they're relevant to each other, the colon works perfectly in the middle. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Give yourself a score out of 12. If you got them all right, fantastic, well done. If you've made some mistakes, that's absolutely fine. The whole point of these videos is so that you can recognize your mistakes and go away and improve on them. Anything you need extra help with, I've got loads of free videos on this channel. Make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Check out the other videos and I will see you in the next video.